Hey everybody, it's Jim here. Today's video is a viewer request and not just one person wanted to see this. Several people across the few videos I've made already with the Harley Ben ST Modern Plus said it was something they'd be interested in. We're gonna be comparing this guitar against the Fender Corey Wong Stratocaster. This has a lot of the same specifications as an American Ultra, the compound radius D-shaped neck, which also fills in with the Harley Ben and a similar kind of electrical layout, albeit this is a stacked bridge pickup compared to a full out humbucker that comes on the Harley Benton guitar. To begin with, I just do not think that this is an apples to apples. I just want that to be known. However, you guys wanted it, so let's do it. We'll start right off with some amp sounds. We're gonna mic up the Dr. Z and get right to it. Any drive is gonna be from the Brown Amplification Protein. Reverb is gonna be from the amp. That's all we're gonna be using for today.
I'm going to start with the Harley Benton because there's one thing on this guitar that I feel is better than what comes on both the Corey Wong and the American Ultra stock, and that's the bridge. The Babbitt's bridge on this is unbelievably good. I love playing with this bridge itself. It's got such a nice tension to it. You can really get expressive when you're using this and it stays in tune super well. You do have to adapt a little bit to the spacing and the size of the actual saddles themselves. But once you do, man, the Babbitt's bridge, I would highly recommend you check one of those out, even if it's not on this specific model of guitar. The other thing I prefer about the Harley Benton is having the truss rod adjustment right here at the base of the neck instead of at the top of the headstock. All right, now we're on to the fender. I'm going to warn you in advance. I'm going to be blunt here. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. And in the past, I've been pretty critical of fender when I haven't been happy with them. However, in the case of this guitar and comparing it with the Harley Benton guitar, this one feels so much nicer to play especially the neck the neck on this guitar the shape of it really does feel like a true d to me whereas the harley benton feels like more of an in between a c and a d and i know that there's fine margins in between those two shapes but really this is a more defined shape on it the actual fretboard being rolled and rolled really well on the edges it makes a huge difference for me as a player because I play a lot of thumb over. I notice it. It makes it a lot more comfortable. I can play a bit quicker up and down the neck. The fret wire size is the same on this guitar as the Harley Benton. So considering that when I'm switching back between the two of them, I'm immediately like, oh, I, I like this a lot more with the Fender. And it just feels like a nicer instrument in my hands. It, it kind of is what it is. But again, this is to be expected. And I'm not saying this to knock the Harley Benton. There's one other thing, though, talking about the actual playing experience that I would never have noticed had I not had these guitars back to back to play and that is the upper fret access right here. Now on first glance the actual shape of the cutaway looks pretty much identical on the Harley Benton to the Fender. It's a modern design that allows you easier access to the upper frets. However in practice when you look at them from the side you might be able to see why I think the Fender is way easier and much more comfortable to get around with and something that if Harley Benton wants to update this on future guitars I think it would serve them well. It's much thinner on the fender so the cutaway here is not only shaped nicer but it just makes it so you have less area of guitar neck to get around to get to the higher frets so if you're somebody that plays lead you're gonna notice this dead on straight away and you're gonna say oh wow whereas with the harley benton it kind of reminds me more of when you're trying to reach the higher frets on a gibson les paul for example and you're just kind of butting up against the kind of bottom of it and you're really gonna have to stretch your wrist a little bit to get to where you need to go however it's not unplayable and it's by no means the end of the world. Now we're going to wrap this video up by talking a little bit about price and value. At the time when I bought the Corey Wong Strat, it was on sale from a Fender retailer for $1199.99 and many other people took advantage of that sale that lasted well over a month. What did I get for my money? I got a guitar that was made in America that has a satin nitro finish on it. It's got Seymour Duncan pickups, rosewood fingerboard, and a hard shell case. Didn't need anything else after the purchase. And for me, it's a hell of a value. This is also a hell of a value. Because if you look at the other competition in its price range of approximately $350 to $500, there's not much that I see or that I'm aware of that's going to compare with it. However, at the end of the day here, I think it's a bridge too far to compare this guitar with this guitar. This is a good guitar in its price range and in its own right. And in general, this is a really nice instrument. However, this one to me, it just feels nicer to play and it'll be the one that I keep going for. That's going to be it for today though. Feel free to let me know a comment to know your opinions on this and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy everybody.